as we as we all know, the, the Yankees don't have a ton of solutions behind the top three, and it gets a little bit black holeish back there. And, and I, guess, I guess they're making some adjustments, and it's partly because Glaber's out. Uh, I guess because of his groin that he was talking about yesterday with the non-hustle play. Uh, but but what can Aaron Boone do? Like what can he do to make this pop a little bit more? Because I think it's good players who are just going through a really tough time at the wrong time. It's true. And I think the Yankees on the depth side were counting on their farm system. And they actually do have some good young prospects. We've, we're seeing one right now, Ben Rice, mm -hmm. who you'll see start first base. And he's been impressive so far. And you don't know about rookies, but you want to see more. And then, you know, the, the Mets have their own thing with Vientos and Baby, sure, too, yeah. certainly. They have a kid named Caleb Durbin who got hit in the hand. He was off to a great start in AAA, play second base. He probably could have gave them some depth. Uh, Dominguez has an oblique injury. Horrible timing with right. that. That's what they, I think they were counting on to fill. He would be here right now, you know, with, with the injuries that they've had. So, you know, the, the problem is there's another guy, uh, Pereira, that's, uh, and, uh, that plays the outfield that has uh, Tommy John surgery. Yep. So oh. the list goes on and on. There's about four or five minor league guys that were knocking on the door that they thought would be their depth pieces and they've all been hurt there is you know, this is a long season obviously and as a baseball fan i've learned right, i gotta be patient you're never that good when you're hot you're never that bad when you're struggling i've gotten the sense that the yankee fan eight out of 11 they're deeply worried i still look at this as a funk from a good team what say you watching this team right now well, I, I do believe that the first part of the season, everything went well for them. Mm -hmm. You know, they were they were a little bit over their skis, especially the pitching staff, because that was what we were really worried about when Garrett Cole got hurt in spring training was, uh, uh oh, the red flags are up. Right. Mm -hmm. How will they do? Nestor Cortez coming off an injury. What's he going to be like? Really, everybody from top to bottom almost overachieved to a certain extent, True. especially the bullpen. And now we're seeing the bullpen start to get turned over a little bit. And, you know, outside of Clay Holmes and Luke Weaver and, the Met throwaway, Tonkin, <laughs> you know, who's been lights out. Double and throwaway. That, that's that's kind of the top three on the, in the Yankee bullpen. So, yes, they need some help. There's no doubt about it. Um, but Judge and Soto are that good. They're all world. They really are a great tandem. Uh, together, they've been just phenomenal. We really, we haven't seen this accumulation of war. If you want to use war as a mm -hmm. ranking, right. really, the 27 Yankees with Ruth and Gehrig are the only tandem that are at this point in the season, almost a halfway point, that have a better war ranking than Soto and Judge in the history of the game. Yeah, it's amazing that I was looking coincidentally at the war ranking yesterday at the Yankees, and you see that, but then you also see everyone else's war is <laughs> yes. horrible. Well, can you sustain scoring enough runs? and winning when it's literally only two guys doing it? Or are you going to see teams do what the Mets did last night, which is essentially say, I'm going to let them beat us? Yeah, I think that, you know, the Yankees are up against it. I mean, you, you trust the track records of guys like DJ LeMayhew and Glaber Torres, and, and you think, okay, you guys just got to you got to ride this out because eventually they're going to turn it around. Right. Maybe their overall numbers on the year won't match the back of their bubblegum card, but when they do turn it around from that point on, they'll, they'll be something, they'll be a presence. And, you know, if not, they're going to be in trouble without a doubt, and they're going to have to think about alternatives. Yeah, you were talking about uh, some of the starting pitching overachieving. That was without Garrett Cole. Now Garrett Cole is back, his second uh, start of the season. He gets roughed up a little bit. And you could tell he was just trying to get right with yeah. Vientos, and Vientos has punished him. He's become a better hitter than I think we want to give him credit for. I think now we have to give him credit, Mark Vientos. But where is Garrett Cole right now? I mean, it's hard to miss that much of a season and then just jump right back into it and be a quote-unquote savior, which yeah. he's kind of being asked to do in some ways. You know, you know, based right. on you know, your career and what you know, everything you've seen. So even though it's a different sport, it's kind of the same mentality. And, yes, it's tough. He, he pushed his, uh, his rehab short because it was the Orioles. Yankees had some injuries to the rotation. It just The timing lined up to where, you know what? I've only thrown 65 pitches up to this point after my third rehab start. Let's just go ahead and mm -hmm. push the envelope here. And, and he's still in spring training. So he faced a hot lineup. They were on him. He had a tough first inning. He was in kind of search mode in the second inning. They made him pay. And uh, so certainly, uh, you know, he needs a little more time to get it going. But, yeah, it's, that was the wake-up call for somebody. When you think you can just jump right back in there. Yeah. And, and the team that's clicking right now, and the, as the Mets lineup is, you, you can get it handed to you in a hurry. I know it backfired, but it was interesting hearing Cole after the game talk about how his velocity was popping early on his fastball and then made the conscious effort of, hey, if I'm going to go deep into this game, I can't throw 97-98. It doesn't seem like we see a lot of pitchers do that in this day and age. No, we 
see, he's the type that can sort of save something in his back right. pocket and add when he needs to, especially late in the game. That's been his M.O. really his entire career. But, yeah, you could see he got into, as I said before, he's like, uh, let me just spot some fastballs and see if I can get some, some quick outs right. early in the count. And the quick outs went over the fence. Right. And, and next thing you know, you're behind the eight ball. Yeah, is that prudent to think that way? I know because he, at his best, last year he could have done it any game he wanted to because he was, he was pitching at a Cy Young caliber. Is that smart? You know what I mean? Because even even the young kids, they they can hit 92. Yeah, I, I think if you're going for you know location, then I I can get it a little bit mm-hmm. more so with guys that are sinker ballers, put it in play, guys, hit it on the ground, and let's let's make a play. Spotting four seamers, you really have to thread that needle. It's sort of like bowling; you got to hit the lane, mm-hmm. and if you miss the lane, then you you lo- your lack of velocity and the straightness on the fastball you can get hurt on. We're talking to David Cohn. You can see him on the Yes Network. Does the Sunday Night Baseball as well. Any concern over the two bad starts from Carlos Rodon? Are you seeing anything that's concerning from you, for you? Not stuff-wise, no. You know, he's an emotional guy. Yeah, we I mean, saw that. He can get he can get lit up in a hurry out there emotionally. So, yeah, you can see that happening, but I, his stuff is still good. Um, I think he's kind of making that that transition on what pitches to throw. I'm a power guy, but I know in the future they want me to feature a changeup and be more of a, a four-pitch guy. He's come up with a cutter this year, so repertoire-wise, he's kind of in a little bit of a new area for him and sequencing which pitches to throw. Do I just stay with my best two? You know, his last few years, he was fastball at the top of the zone and slider down, kind of a two-pitch guy, and he's trying to become a four-pitch guy. And uh, to, in order to do that, there's going to be some bumps in the road, and I see that more as, as an issue, the sequencing of pitches in terms terms of how he goes about it as opposed to stuff. His stuff is still good. This season has stiffened up a little bit. The competition for the Yankees, uh, the series losses consecutively, is it's, it's worrisome. Uh, should we be worried? Absolutely, fans. That's what fans do, right? right? That's why. That's I'm talking about internally. Inter- uh, well, should yes, Aaron Boone be worried? He's going to speak uh, optimism because that's that's yes, just Aaron Boone. Sure. And, uh, but I asked him yesterday, "What is are you, is something going to change at the deadline?" He just gave me a smile, like you just I could see it. He was saying, "Yeah, yeah it's going to change," <laughs> but we don't know what it's going to be. But uh, sure. what's, where's the worry level internally? Forget oh, us fans, but I'm yeah, talking about internally. No, no, I'm sure there is worry level internally, especially uh, on the bullpen side. You know, do they have enough? Do they, they need more? We've seen, you know, a big turnover over the last yeah. couple of weeks in their bullpen alone. So, yeah, that, that's an area of concern. How far do you ride it out with some of your veteran guys? And, you know, do you still believe in them or not? Do you, do you trust the track record? Do you think DJ LeMay can turn it around? Do you think Glaber's going to eventually turn it around? That's really what it comes down to. Right. You know, and, and then secondly, it's sort of like the NFL draft. When you look at the trade deadline, you think, well, we're going to get this guy. Yeah. Well, now you're going to get the best available talent, right? <laughs> That's yeah. the way you do it because yeah. the best laid plans when you target guys, it's, it's going to be a seller's market. You know, there's not that many sellers because of the expanded playoff yeah, format. Right. Who's out of it? So you can't say, we're going to target this guy and go get that guy. And now there's six other teams that want that guy. So you, yeah. better, you better take the best available athlete you can find and, and plug him in and, and mix and match that way. Well, look, they'll get somebody, but you're right. Like right now, it's tough to figure out who the sellers are going to be. Internally, they, Claybert Torres has to be better. I mean, what we saw last night, yes. first of all, that at-bat in the first inning was dreadful. The non-hustle play, the error. Is it mental with him? What do you think is going on with Glaber? I think that's part of it. I mean, it, we, we've known Glaber a long time. I love Glaber. I think he's a great kid. I think he's wearing it right now emotionally. There's right. no doubt about it. It's some, you know, yeah, you, the, the question or the old cliche is, is are you taking your offense out on defense with you? And you never know for sure, but what you see is that you worry about that. And maybe he does need a little bit of a break. And I think it's good he's out of the lineup tonight. Let him sit for a minute. If his growing's really that tight, then maybe that's affecting his offense as well. So, yeah. Yeah, he needs a little mental break right now, and, and then maybe he can recharge a little well, bit. Well, so he doesn't hustle. It was very noticeable yeah. to everybody, right? He says, my groin's bothering me. Maybe it is. I mean, he has had a groin issue. That's fine. I know as fans, we look at that and say, oh, this is crap. You can't play him. As a teammate, if you were a teammate, I'm sure there were plenty of teammates that didn't hustle back in your day. <laughs> does it, it, does it kind of bother the team when they see a guy like that do that? late in the game? Well, there's two different schools of thought. You know, the the old school of thought is this guy's a dog. You know, he doesn't care. That's not Glaber. Mm-hmm. These guys care too much. He's so disappointed that he hit another ground ball that he, he's, he's mad at himself. That's why he didn't run as hard, along with the fact that maybe his groin is a little bit tight in that situation. But, you know, it's not like somebody who doesn't care. They care too much. Right. So there's a, there's a different level where back in the day, this guy's a dog. He's, he doesn't care about the team. That, that's not the case here. Yeah, and, and look, the other guy you mentioned, it, it's clear 
clearly not care because you can see it on his face. But when is the time for DJ to be not a regular player? Well, you, 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 it's easy to say, sit this guy, get right. that guy, release that guy. Well, okay, who's going to play? Right. You know, who are you going to replace him with? That's right. really the ultimate question is do you have a better option? And Yeah, the problem is the Yankees don't right now. They don't have a better option right now. And he still is DJ LeMayu. He is a two-time batting champ. At some point, he's going to probably turn it around. His overall numbers on the year probably won't, as I said before, be what he what you're normally used to. But maybe for the next, maybe for the last two months, he finds something and gets close to what his normal production is, and that works. It, the guy, and we're talking to David Cohn, that I look at, and we're seeing it tonight with this Yankee lineup, that I think should just play every day and let's see what he's got is Ben Rice. Because when they called him up, and we all saw the numbers down in the minors, he had lefties. So it's like, all right, let's just see if he can hit major league lefties. He didn't play yesterday. He is playing today against Sean. Manaya. And look, there's so much kind of movement right now with this lineup. You need a DH with Giancarlo out. We mentioned DJ and Glaber's situation. To me, I would want Ben Rice every day, and let's just evaluate him and see if he can be an everyday player. Well, it, it's a valid point, Evan. I mean, he leaves you wanting to see more. Yeah. And I'll say this. He faced Chris Sale the other night. Chris Sale's now Chris Sale again. Right. He has been, yeah. <laughs> and Ben Rice didn't give an inch. I mean, he didn't get a hit off of, of, of Sale, but he made Sale throw seven, eight, nine pitches, following foul him off, taking tough sliders. And that's when I opened my eyes and said, whoa, this kid's not giving an inch. And as I said before, when you watch Ben Rice play, it's like, I want to see more of that. Right. Just what you're saying. Let's see him play. Let's see him get. 200 at bats over the next couple of months or next uh, you know two and a half months and see we'll see what he turns out. Do you think he grows into the the long term solution at first base? Because it's, it's only been a few weeks. Yeah, no, it, it, that's a big question. I mean, he's he's got high aptitude, hmm. smart kid. I'm not you know it's easy to say Ivy Leaguer, he's from Dartmouth, you know, or whatever. He's <laughs> hey. bilingual, right. you know, he's, he's perfectly bilingual, pretty impressive. That is that very is impressive. impressive in the clubhouse. So he obviously he has high aptitude. Um, he has great plate awareness, great plate presence. Can he play first base long term? He moves pretty good around there. Maybe he could learn the position. I mean, you know, I played with a guy, Tito Martinez, that learned how to play first yeah. base and got yeah. better and better and ended up winning a gold glove. And he came on the heels of Mattingly. And when Tino came over, we're like, uh-oh. You know, <laughs> that's not Don Mattingly over there. <laughs> right. He has a glove on the wrong hand, first of all. So, But he turned he turned into a, a gold glove guy at first base. So when you pissed, w was there sticky stuff? Like, what was the deal back then with that? There was pine tar. There was guys that used pine tar. I was worried about blisters back then. Right. You know, obviously we the didn't. The pine tar would give you blisters. Yes, it would rip the pads off of your fingertips. I mean, you rely oh, on wow. spinning and, you know, the friction when you put your fingertips on the seams is, is, is pretty violent uh, as you, you twist and turn and, ma and manipulate the baseball. So I was always worried about that, but we didn't have Rapsodo. We didn't have high-speed cameras. We didn't understand you can increase spin rate and really affect the movement on the ball, especially on four-seam fastballs at the top of the zone. So, yeah, we, we didn't have that information, but 1988, playing for the Mets. Jay Howell mm. has pine tar on his glove in That's the playoffs. Right. Yeah. Bar Giamatti sitting right there. <laughs> they bring the glove over to the commissioner, and they, boom, you're out. <laughs> so, yeah, they, you know, the sticky stuff is always I around. wonder if Bart was like, this is sticky, not tacky. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Well, exactly. I, I think we're all just deeply confused, and I know it affected the Mets the other day with Edwin Diaz, but I also think it could affect anybody at any moment. Like, who the heck knows? Clay Holmes comes into a game. It could be him next time. Garrett Cole, we know about his history. It could be a Yankee. It could be a Met. Do you think this is a problem right now in Major League Baseball with the inconsistencies that we have? Well, one thing they're really worried about it in central office is the strikeout rate. They want more action. They want more balls in play. The pitchers clearly are ahead of the curve yeah. with pitch design and all the new technology they use and weight training and, and weighted balls to chase velocity. So, yeah, the pitchers are better than ever. People ask me this. I see more better relievers, especially with nasty stuff. Right. Look at the Mets. Even though I know the numbers haven't been great, they had three guys that came in and threw 95 to 100 miles an hour. Yeah. The ball judge hit out was 99 miles an hour. You know, right, even yeah. though it was 0-2 right down the middle, but yeah. nonetheless, I mean, the pitching is fantastic. It's harder than ever to hit in this game, so I can understand, you know, Major League Baseball say, hey, wait a minute, right. is this really well, helping the strikeout rate? We need to get the strikeout rate down. We need to get the ball in play. Are they using a, is, is the punishment, does the punishment fit the crime? As far as it's a reliever out for 10 days as opposed to a starting pitcher who might miss one start. Isn't there a way to kind of force pitchers to change and not have them throw as hard as often? Like one idea, and I know it's been mentioned a little bit, is cut down the amount of pitchers that you could have on a roster. And now all of a sudden guys are like, wow, I got to go deep into this game. Mm -hmm. Or relievers are, hey, I can't just go max effort on every pitch. 
Is that a way you think to fix that problem? It'll have a trickle down effect, right? It will. You know, there's a lot of ideas that are going across Rob Manfred's uh, desk right now in the commissioner's office, really the entire office. They're talking about it, trying to figure it out. I believe that the market corrects itself. If you, you know, the pitchers know that the chase for velocity is going to increase your risk for injury. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you know that. You're equipped with that. And so the pitchers that are more craftsmen, that can paint, that can get the ball down, put the ball on the ground, even Peterson last yeah, night, yeah. even though he had some strikeouts, his sinker and changeup have, has led to a higher ground ball rate for him to great success. And those kind of guys, like a, a Chris Bassett, you know, that, that are, you know, used to be yeah. obviously the former yeah, sure. Matt. Blue Jays. He's, now, he's yeah. a pitcher, right? He's yeah. painting in and out. He's got a lot of different looks. He moves the ball around. Those guys become more valuable as the guys trying to chase velocity and throw 100 miles an hour get hurt. Yeah. Coney, how, how do pitchers and, you know, um, how, do, how do batters catch back up? You know what I mean? You're talking this pitcher advantage, spin rate, all these other things, sticky stuff, whatever. How do batters catch back up? Well, there, there, there is technology for batters, too. Uh, you know, several hitters will go out to driveline in Seattle, or there's several outlets of driveline now where you can, you can study your biomechanics with force plates on the ground, the efficiency of your body movement. It's in all sports now, mm-hmm. but especially baseball. You can really look at your mechanics. There's different uh, high-speed cameras that can break down your mechanics as a hitter. There's new pitching machines that, that mimic the pitchers, the traject machine it's called, that you actually see the, the, the pitcher of the exact pitcher, <laughs> and they have this exact spin rate wow. and the movement, oh. vertical and horizontal <laughs> movement like that cheating. that pitcher throws. <laughs> and you have batting machines now that hitters are using wow. that, that have just come out in the last two years. So, yeah, the hitters are behind the curve, but they're starting to catch up with some of the technology that's out there. Now, lastly, for the Yankee fan listening, they trust you. They trust David Cohen. They watch you on TV. They watch you, and they believe in you. Should they be worried, or should they calm down? Everything's going to be okay with the New York Yankees. No, good, a good, healthy amount of worry is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Yes, it's okay. That's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you interested, you know? And that's a, you, you watch, you scream at the TV, you're upset, they got to do this, you got to do that. That's a good thing for the game. That's why you call them fans, right? They're right. fanatics. Yeah, so I have no problem with that. Judge and Sodor are on a historic pace. They alone can carry this team to a certain extent. But you need help and you need some of the guys to fill in. And you got to really watch real closely on the trade deadline on who they add because the Yankees are all in mm-hmm. this year. Oh, they have to be. There's to be. no question. Well, they are all in. Do you get the vibe Juan Soto wants to stay? He loves it in the Bronx. You get that vibe? I think Juan Soto's a really smart guy. I think every city he goes to is like, this place is kind of nice. Yeah. You know? Oh, no, he was out here flirting with Met fans. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, he was out here flirting I'm, with Met I'm fans. I'm going to enjoy free agency. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, that sort of, but and he should. He's yes. earned the right to. And he has. But Judge and Soto together, it kind of feels like that that's the match that needs to happen. It's incredible to watch. It really is. David, we appreciate it, man. Sure, Thank my you, pleasure, guys. Always good Great to be on. Great David Cohn. You can yeah. see him on the Yes Network, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball as well. Evan and Tika will come right back. We'll talk to Ron Darling live from the Cadillac Club here at City Field before New York Mets versus New York Yankees. 